Plas is one of the six games that make up the Galco Arcade One collection on the Evercade console, and it's a name that doesn't really give much away. So what is Glass exactly? Glass is essentially a top-down arena shooter where the object is to clear the field of all the glass panes. You fly around the arena in your little spaceship and use an orb that spins around it to make the glass panes disappear. Sounds simple, right? Well, there's a vast array of enemies that are out there to stop you in your tracks. One hit from these saboteurs will take one of your lives away, but happily, you armed yourself and can fight back. You can fly in all directions, and in Pac-Man style, it's not too difficult to evade the foes if you want to go down that route and just focus on clearing that glass. You start with a standard gun, which to be honest works pretty well against all enemies, but you can pick up power-ups to give you even more firepower, such as through missiles or flamethrower. Adding to this, you start with some bombs and can pick up even more, that will allow you to leave timed blasts for your foes to wander into. So essentially, there's a lot going on, and it all keeps you very engaged. There's multiple different worlds to play through, each one has a different theme, such as Amazon's world or Dog's world, and then each world has four stages to it. The first three stages are all standard ones with you clearing the glass, and the fourth level has you take on a much more formidable challenge in a boss battle. Breaking the worlds up into four stages helps to keep things moving along at a good pace, and you shouldn't find yourself stuck in one world for too long. Now saying this, there were two times I did find myself getting particularly stuck in this game, and interestingly, they were both in very similar positions. The boss of World 2, and the final overall boss of the game, are a very similar looking enemy and they both offer a pretty strong challenge. Here, you have to take on two rather large enemies at once, while avoiding the projectile attacks they continually pump out. In the final boss battle it gets even tougher, as those projectiles are actually little spaceships just like yours, and they can shoot back at you. Now these two battles are particularly tough as you need to evade both enemies and if you get hit once not only do you lose a life, but the enemies will gain all of their health back. Now I struggled with the second world boss for a while, but if you find yourself in a similar position, I suggest just keeping at it and trying to learn some of the movements the enemies make. There's a way of gaining some cover in corners while you take the attack to them, and it also works best to focus on eliminating one of the enemies first as opposed to splitting your attack out between the two. Now I should point out I only played this game in single player. But if there's two of you combined together for the local co-op mode, these battles will essentially two bosses might be a little bit more manageable when you share the workout. Other boss battles included a three-headed hellhound, a flying devil, and then rather incredibly, uh, a floating bowl of blood. One slight negative I'd point out is that the game will telegraph to you where enemies are going to come from. They enter the arena from different parts of the screen, and a star will light up to tell you that an enemy is en route. Now at first this is really useful, but as you get more familiar with the game, it almost begins to feel a bit cheap, as you can knock the opponents out before they ever really get going. It would have been good to see this as a feature that you can turn on or off to give you some additional challenge. So if you know some of the backstory of this game, you know I can't complete a look into it without mentioning some of the um, different versions of this game that were released. When you begin, you offer the choice of playing through the girls mode or the boys mode. Now I had never played this before, so this naturally was a bit of an eyebrow raiser. What exactly did they mean by this choice? I assumed it had something to do with the difficulty level. Perhaps girls mode would be easier than boys mode, uh, you know, a bit sexist perhaps, but this is a game from the early 90s. But no, what this was referring to is the level of nudity or near nudity of the different genders you'll see when playing through the game. Originally, clearing the glass would present you with something like a half-naked anime girl or a photograph of a male model wearing a tight pair of speedos. As you can tell from this review, the folks behind the Evercade weren't too keen on this rather lewd variant of the game, and instead added a more family-friendly version of the title onto their cartridge. Instead of any flesh on display, we instead get the standard level backgrounds when clearing the glass, and then a nice and very age-appropriate cartoon cat, or maybe a slightly more risque outline of a lady to enjoy after completing the level, depending on whether you've played girls mode or boys mode. I'm not totally sure the developers included some of this content. The game itself is very good, so they should have felt confident enough in it to pull the audience and the coins in their pockets in. Certainly it being missing doesn't really seem to affect anything. One other odd aspect of Glass is some of the strange pronunciations you'll hear for some of the worlds, and some of the English style translations that have slipped through the net. Some of the lovely ladies originally promised have remained on these screens too, but it's nothing too titillating. Still, this oddness just helps give the game more of a quirky feel to it for my money. To sum up, Glass is a game that is well worth your time checking out. You can probably complete it in just over an hour, but the gameplay is very addictive, so I found myself coming back to it and playing a few worlds over on a number of occasions now. All the graphics, animations and sounds make for a rich experience, and while it can offer a challenge it isn't too difficult so as to be off-putting. It's another strong release from the Galco Collection cartridge, but I'm going to be generous and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 score.